Hello everyone, I hope everyone's well and welcome to our webinar about HVCR applications with dedicated variable speed drives. My name is Janaína and I work in International Sales Department of Reg Automation. And today, my colleague Altair Jr. will present the webinar. He's a sales engineer in International Sales Department with more than seven years of experience. Well, before we start, we have some information to share with you. Should you have any questions, you can write it in the questions and answers chat in this stream platform, and our, our team is going to answer it. To make sure the sound quality is good, our microphones are going to be muted. The webinar will be recorded, meaning you can watch it later or send it to a colleague. To do so, just go to Egg's LinkedIn page and then click on events. There you there you will find this webinar and the other, other ones from automation or any other division of, of WEC. Our next webinar will be about variable speed drive control methods. I will present it and the invitation will be sent soon. Last but not least, follow WEG's, WEG's page on LinkedIn. We share updates about WEG, products, solutions and webinars there. So, given the information, let's start our webinar. Now, go ahead, Altair. Hello everyone, my name is Altair Grotti Jr. I'm here at Bag Automation in Brazil. Uh, before we start, I hope everyone is safe, healthy and also vaccinated. Uh, Janaina, thank you very much for the introduction. So let's start. So today's webinar, it's about HVAC, HVACR. Um, HVRCR applications with dedicated variable speed drives, or simply put, VSDs. Understand why you should use dedicated solutions for controlling systems of heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration efficiently. So, uh, let's begin with the agenda of this webinar. Uh, we first explain the basics of uh, HVCR. Uh, what is it, why we should use it, and where you use it. Uh, then we will move to the explanation of how it works, also the bas basics of uh, these systems of heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration. And also I will explain the main components of it, uh, why you should use dedicated VSDs in this market uh, and not other sort of components. Uh, later on, I will explain uh, I will showcase the main products of WEG for this application. So we have two uh, lines of drives, the CFW 501 and 701. Then success case of WEG, a wrap up, and then the Q&A &Q um, part of the presentation. So let's start. What is HVACR? I know it's very basic, but let's recap it. It's heating, it's the acronym for heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration. From this point on, uh, I will call it HVAC because it's simpler and shorter for me to say so many times during the presentation. So that's the term I will use to refer to it. So HVAC are systems, equipment, uh, and process that you use to control temperature to keep it within a comfortable range of living beings, mostly in residential and commercial buildings, but it's also applied for industries or any other sort of building. But usually it's referred to these two uh, sort of places, residential and commercial buildings. So this question is, but why do we need HVAC uh, in our lives? Well, first of all, because there are some places of the globe that's extremely cold and you couldn't have a comfortable life without heating. For example, here in the picture, we see a place with a very heavy uh, winter with snow uh, and on. And on the other hand, there are other places that's extremely hot where temperatures can reach, I don't know, maybe more than 40 degrees Celsius. So you need some sort of cooling system to also once again give you some sort of comfort while you use sleep, uh, work, study, and then on. So basically that's the first why. Temperatures dramatically uh, varies between these thick regions of the planet. Why is that the temperature also varies in the same place. So for example, in North America, 
you can have a heat wave and then during summertime and then temperatures can reach like 40 degrees Celsius or even more. And during winter time, it can go down minus 10, minus 20. During blizzards, who knows how uh, down it can be the temperature. So throughout the year, you need uh, HVAC systems to give you this comfortable life uh, in whatever uh, in whatever you do, just like I said before, during work, studying, sleeping, and then on. And the last why is because scientists they are all saying that, or at least most of them, they are saying that temperatures are going to just one direction, and the direction it's up. Here we have these study this graph showing four studies from four different agencies uh, from three different countries saying that temperatures the average temperature is going up and because of it studies suggest that not only summers are becoming hotter but also winters are becoming colder as a side effect of it so once again these hotter summers and colder winters will make a big impact in our lives and we need something to go around of it So what do we seek with um, HVAC systems? So the first one I have already said, it's about the comfort. Is the, you want to control temperature and humidity where, where you are. The second point is, is to provide clean air. So you want to filter the air that you get from outside before uh, changing the temperature of it, exchanging heat with it. So making cooler, cooler or hotter, and then you can breathe uh, clean air. And the third point is to circulate the air. You, have, you also have to bring fresh air from outside because in the breathing process, we breathe in O2, ox oxygen, and then we breathe, breathe out uh, CO2, which is not good for us. So you have to bring partially, at least partially fresh air from outside. So you have to renew the air that you have in a premise. And the last question is, where, where can you use it? So basically, it's, it's everywhere. Uh, there is a long list of applications, places like hospitals, airports, sh shopping centers, stadiums, schools, hotels, universities, industries, and obviously uh, in houses where you live. So now let's go to the second topic. How does an HVAC system work and uh, what are the main components of it? Uh, we will start in the HVAC with the ACR part, with the air conditioning and refrigeration. Uh, any refrigeration or air conditioning system uh, is comprised of at least four, four main components. The compressor, the expansion valve, evaporator and condenser. Uh, the compressor and expansion valve, they play like a pair, but in the opposite sides. And the same happens with the evaporator and condenser. So here this line represents a closed circuit between them. So to explain uh, this system, I will explain how one cycle of refrigeration works. And as it's a repetitive cycle, if you learn it once, you would learn forever, basically. So inside of the circuit, there is a special material, special gas called uh, coolant, which is a refrigeration gas, which changes, let's say, dramatically uh, in temperature and, and state uh, as they go through these, these stages. So let's start. So because there is no beginning and end, I will start here after the expansion valve. So at this point, uh, when the coolant leaves the expansion valve, it's a um, cool liquid and partially gas. And once it hits the evaporator and the evaporator, it's basically a coil like um, a serpentine uh, coil. And when the coolant reaches the evaporator, it absorbs heat from, from the inside. So let's think here that on the left side uh, of the screen, it's your apartment, your office, and these, and the coolant, while passing through the evaporator, it evaporates, as the name says, and then it absorbs heat from the inside to transport outside. Uh, an analogy to a evaporator, it's basically the air conditioner that you have inside your home, for example. So, uh, instead of thinking that you are blowing cold air inside, actually you are removing the heat from inside. That's actually what's happening inside your apartment. Once it crosses the evaporator, so it evaporates, it, it, it goes from liquid state 
to a gas state, but still a little bit cool. Once it reaches the compressor, uh, it changes uh, the temperature. Why? Because the compressor, as the name says, compresses the gas and moves the gas to a high pressure side. And by changing the, the pressure of the material of the coolant, it gets hot. And then in this part, when it uh, reaches the condenser, which is also similar to the evaporator, also comprised of coils, the gas loses heat to the exterior. Why? Because the gas becomes liquid because it condenses, as the name says. So the analogy here is the heat pump that you have outside your home or outside buildings, uh, which helps to, to, to exchange heat with exterior. And also, um, in some cases, there are uh, fans that help with this process. After the condenser, so the hot gas becomes a hot liquid, it changes the state, and then it moves the expansion valve which it's expanded and then moves to the low pressure side of it when it becomes once again a mostly liquid and partially gas. And basically that's how the process of exchanging heat happens. So that's what happens, for example, in your house, in a small place, uh, a small office. But imagine if you have a very large building a whole industry, uh, shopping mall, hospitals. How how do you make the whole hospital, uh, the whole com uh, commercial building, with a let's say pleasant, comfortable temperature? So we have to use larger um, products, larger equipment, in a larger scale to 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 deal with it. But the the main principle of ex exchanging heat is the same, just like I explained it uh, on the previous slide. But there is one thing that changes. Uh, the equipment itself now they're much, let's say, larger. So here we use a chiller, which has the four components inside of it: the compressor, the expansion valve, evaporator, and condenser. And also the coolant is used in this closed circuit. However, to transfer the heat from one side, from inside to outside in the building, you, you cannot use like pipes with coolant in the whole building. It would be too expensive to use coolant everywhere. So you use a cheaper mean to, to transport the, the heat. How do you do it? With water. So once again, let's think that this, uh, the left side of the slide is the interior part, interior part of your building. So basically you use water that will exchange heat with the coolant when it goes through the evaporator. Then it's uh, this water go through the coils in this case here, it's a cooling coil where there is a fan behind of it, which will blow towards the coil and then the cool air, the cool air will blow to your office or to a, a hospital room and then on. This one is called the main circuit. So here the water flows through the evaporator, gets cooled and then it's moved to, to interior. The coolant, when passes through the evaporator and exchanges it with the water, obviously gets hotter and then moves through all the circuit as excellent before. And then when it moves to the condenser, it, it is a little bit hotter than before. So you have to cool it before it goes through the cycle once again. So on the right side, there is a, the secondary circuit where you cool down the coolant. How? By using cool water. Uh, so in the second in this second circuit, you have water that will through a cooling tower, and as the name says, it cools water. There are also fans to help to help cooling um, the temperature down of the water, and then it goes down. Uh, sorry, it goes around the circuit and goes through the condenser to exchange heat with the coolant. So basically, here you we have three circuits: one with the coolant, and two with water because with water we can make very long circuits throughout buildings and on the other side here you can also have the chiller in one place of, of your facility and the cooling tower also in another place for example. So basically that's what a large system uh, works in an industry, hospitals, shopping malls and then on. And depending on the size of it, uh, when the these components they are very far apart between them, we can also use pumps to pump the cooled water here from the cooling tower to the condenser, 
and the cool water from the evaporator to the fans that are spread throughout the, the building. So now we are going to check the HV part of the HVAC. First, uh, here we have a unit called AHU, which means air handling unit. Uh, basically, this is a compact version, uh, kind of all in one uh, product for, for, for cooling, for ventilation of buildings. Inside of it, we have filters, air filters, because you have to prevent dust and dirt to come from outside to get inside, because you don't want to breathe this, this dust inside your building, right? There are also heating and cooling coils inside of it because just like I said, that's a all-in-one item. So for when, when it's too hot inside or too cold inside, uh, the same equipment have two coils and then one is on when the other one is off and vice versa. And also there are fans and blowers inside of it to bring the air from outside to inside. So in, you have here all-in-one product. Uh, here the picture is showing that the air handling unit is on the top of the building, so on the roof, but actually it could be anywhere here uh, in the building, on the basement, it could be also, you could have also decentralized systems um, in different floors, so you could have let's say one only for offices, another one only for data centers, another one only for specific rooms, and then on and on and on. Uh, now the heating part. The heating part basically uh, it's a boiler. You have a big boiler just like they say a oven where you burn either oil or gas and then you exchange heat with water or you can create also hot steam to be transferred throughout the whole building and then in several places of the building you have these fan coils also to transfer the hot air uh, to, 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 to all premises so you can have let's say one per uh, office, several per, per floors, and then on and on. Depends on how you want to, to distribute the hot air. So as you can see here in the AA2, we have fans and blowers, and here on the boiler, there are pumps to pump the hot water up in the building. There are blowers and fans. So HVAC systems, they're comprised of, let's say, some main units, the air handling unit, fan coils, boilers, chillers, and cooling towers. In some cases, some of them, in others, maybe all of them. And these units, uh, these main components, they're also comprised of, let's say, subunits, subcomponents, which are evaporators, condensers, air filters, pumps, compressors, fans, and blowers. Once again, you may have some of them or all of them. And you can notice that the three of them three of these uh, subcomponents, they have something in common. Yes, I'm talking about the pumps, the compressors, and the, flame uh, the fans or blowers. What do these loads have in common? Well, uh, unless you are in the 18th uh, century and you are using uh, steam engines to move something, uh, you are obviously using electric motor. And, and what's important about electric motors is because they run with some sort of components. It can be either electromechanical components like a contactor or a motor protective breaker, or it can be electronic components like a soft starter and a variable speed drive, a VST. So now I will explain why you should use a dedicated VSD in HVAC applications in HVAC. Uh, in the following slides, it will be presented very clearly. So you should do VSDs because in just one component, you can assure a lot of things. Uh, you can have alarms in, uh, in this product and also tell you when you should make maintenance. Uh, you, can, you can have specific dedicated functions developed specifically for HVAC, which I will also explain briefly. Um, you can have connectivity, so you can connect the drive uh, to a supervisory system or send this information or you can control the whole system remotely through the network. Uh, you can achieve higher ratings in terms of efficiency and also be more eco-friendly. And above all, you can assure uh, people's safety. So how does it work? Well, VSDs obviously can do a lot. Because you can 
control the speed because that's the name of the VSDs, the variable speed drive, you can uh, achieve energy savings, which I will also explain soon. Uh, because you have memory inside of it, you have a firmware, we can integrate functions and protections in this product. So to assure people's safety, uh, depending on how you design your, your, your system, you can have less maintenance because you can you know when to perform maintenance in your system. You can extend the service life of, of your components. And also because you are integrating a lot of functions in just one product, you can also use fewer components. Uh, VFDs, VSDs can have also integrated soft PLCs or PLCs on it, which can help you with machine and system automations. And once again, you can have remote control and supervision of your system using communication. So the first thing here is the energy saving. How can we achieve it? Well, the main factor of energy consumption in any building is related to air conditioning and heating system. Here we have one study from 2018 showing that a little bit more than half of the energy consumed in a building is related to HVACR, meaning that whatever you do in this uh, slice of the pizza here, of, the, of this pizza chart or pie chart actually, uh, can have a big impact in the overall consumption. So I'll show you how it happens. Remember that the main, uh, there were three components that they, they had something in common. Yes, it was the compressor, the pump, and the fan. So if I manage to reduce the consumption, the energy consumption in these components, I can greatly impact the consumption of the whole building. So let's see how it happens. So some of these loads have a constant torque load which means that the torque is constant, doesn't matter the speed of the application. However, the power required, it varies in a linear way as the speed goes up. So imagine that during a specific time, a period of time, the motor, uh, the compressor, for example, has to run with half capacity. That means that the, the the compressor will run with half of the rated speed and then the power required is only half. So if you compare this solution here, for example, with an electromechanical device, it's not possible because it's either on or off. It's like a switch. You could say that, okay, but there is some motors like a Dallander motor, which I can have like a two speed uh, process. However, the Dallander motor only has two speeds and they're not very common, they're costly, they're larger. So uh, compared to induction motor, they have their issues. So here, and also because with a variable speed drive, you can go through all the, the, the line here. Uh, you go from zero to 100% in very small percentages. With a Dallander motor is still uh, off 50% or 100% of the speed. We can get even more benefits when we use quadratic torque loads like pumps and fans. Uh, so the torque varies like in a uh, square of the speed, but the power, it's the speed uh, to the power of three. Meaning that, let's say once again, you have a fan that has to run for a period of time with only 50% of its speed. That means that the power required is only 13% of the rated one. So how do I achieve this 13%? because it's 50% times 50% times 50%. So you can imagine how much power um, or energy actually you can save by controlling the speed of the process. That's the first part. Uh, and if you want to learn more about energy savings by using variable speed drives, we have one webinar exclusively talking about it on YouTube. So just go to our channel there. So now let's check uh, what a dedicated drive for HVAC has. So here I'm using as an example, the CFW701. Uh, so compared to a standard drive, um, it's not simply a regular drive with something else. No, it's definitely a, a drive with their own software. So it's different from standard drives. The firmware and soft PLC is different. The hardware as well, is different from standard drives, and I will explain you later why. 
Uh, the I.O. configuration is also different from what you have in a general purpose drive. So, for example, instead of a encoder input, here we have placed one PTC input. And the RFI filter is standard. Why? Because as most of the applications are related to commercial buildings, uh, we have to make sure that the drive will not affect other components around of it by uh, radio frequency interference. So let's check some functions that this drive, this HVAC drive has. The first one, it's bypass. So depending on, on your application, some play, in some moment you have to, to bypass the drive, so you can do it by using this function. Uh, just let you know that this, this bypass is asynchronous, and then you can switch a parallel switching device. So in this case here, you can use the contactor, which is um, a great component for fixed speed applications and it's and then it the application runs as a direct online uh, starter basically another function here is the fire mode especially this one for people safety so this fire mode uh, makes the drive to let's say turn off all the internal faults and it will run as much as you can. So let's think an example you are in an airport and then there is fire you want you want to make sure that you have time enough for people to evacuate the building and people do not uh, get in contact to toxic uh, smoke or, or something like this. So you have a smoke extraction system inside of the of the airport and then you want to run this motor as much as you can. It doesn't matter if it overloads or if it has any sort of overheating. You just want to make sure that you, want, you can, you have time enough to extract the smoke and people can evacuate the building. So that's a very important function for HVAC systems. PTC, so instead of using external devices, um, these drive, the HVAC drive already carries one uh, input for PTC sensors. Sensor, sorry. Uh, another function is the sleep wake up mode. So it prevents that the motor will run at low speeds, but it doesn't mean that the drive is sleeping. No, actually it will make the, the motor to not run. So yeah, the motor will sleep, but the drive will still monitor, monitor the main variable of the process. So for example, if you're reading the temperature and the temperature is too close to the set point, for example, so you don't need to keep the motor running. You can turn it off, but if the temperature goes up, uh, let's say above the set point too much or too, or, or below this level, you can set the wake up parameters to restart the conditions and then the drive will restart the motor once again. The filter maintenance alarm uh, is important to tell you when you have to replace the filter. Yes, the air filter that you use in the HVAC system, they have to be replaced from time to time. And also we have advanced PID uh, control loops. So the drive, in this case, this the CFW701 has three. One for the main process, let's say the temperature, and two additional PID loops that you can use for pressure. You can read um, the flow of the air in a duct, for example, and these eliminate the use of additional PID controllers. Another three functions, uh, let's say, dedicated for those three loads I spoke before, pumps, compressors, and um, fans. So the short cycle protection avoids, uh, prevents that the compressor will run successively uh, in several cycles, which is not good for some sort of uh, compressors that have restriction in, num in numbers of uh, switching on and off. Uh, there is the dry pump, which also the name is quite clear. It prevents the, 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 the pump to run dry. And in this case, you save energy because if there is no water to be pumped, so you don't need to keep the motor uh, running, the pump working and the motor running. The broken belt is, kind of, is similar to the dry pump, but in a different concept. Uh, in some cases, for example, some blowers or fans, uh, the motor is not connected let's say directly into the, the fan. So you have a belt, a coupling between them, between the motor and the load. And in case this broke, in case the belt breaks, so the drive will monitor it and will stop the motor 
because there is no point of running when the when the belt is broken. And finally, there is the energy saving function in this drive, uh, which under specific conditions in speed and load, uh, it can reduce the flux inside the motor and then give you an extra boost in energy savings. So if you check here this graph, the first one is using a regular valve. The second line here, the light blue, is using a VSD. So here is the energy consumed, consumed by the system. So you can see that it decreased a lot. And the green line here represents when you are using this energy saving function. So you can see that the, the uh, let's say, highest benefits comes in, in low levels of flux in the motor. So that's uh, an extra, as I said before, extra boost to improve the efficiency of the system. Um, this drive for HVAC, uh, it also has to carry the specific, the dedicated communication protocols uh, to communicate in the, in the system. So it's the BACnet MSTP and also the Metasys uh, N2. And finally, uh, the HMI, the display of the HMI also was specially designed for this application. So on the left side here, we have the uh, group, the parameter groups, so the read, um, basic motor, and on and on. And now we have one specific for HVAC, for, so where you can find all these functions in just one category here. And on the right side of the display, you can find specific HVAC units, for example, temperature, Celsius, Fahrenheit, you can find pressure, bar, PSE, and on, and also flow like gallons per minute, second hours, or cubic meters, cubic feet, and then on. So now that we have presented what a dedicated VSD should have for, for HVAC, we are going to present the WAG HVAC drives. We have two lines, the CFW501 and the 701. For small applications, and let's say less complex, uh, you can use the 501, it goes up to 15 kilowatt. Uh, it has one IP degree of protection version, IP20 or NEMA1. Uh, two control methods, the SCALAR and the VVW, which stands for Voltage uh, Vector WAG, and can be applied from 0 to 50 degrees Celsius. And uh, it obviously carries all the HVAC functions I have just presented before. Uh, for more for larger applications and more complex ones, you can use the CFW701, which can go up to 600 volts, uh, 132 kilowatts, so it, you go much larger than the 501 in motor output. It's available in two IP degree of, pro uh, degree of protections, so IP20 and IP55. So in this case here, you can use it outside a panel, for example, because you can install it directly uh, on the control room or something like this. Um, in this case here, so for these more complex applications, besides the two control methods that the 501 has, it also has the vector control. And these drives can be used in negative temperatures, so down to minus 10 degrees Celsius. And this drive has STO function as, av as available as option, and also they carry those functions I have just presented before. Let's check some mm. uh, specific and main features of HVAC drives. As said before, the hardware is different from regular drives, and that's the case here. So to mitigate harmonics and to meet the suitable standard related to it. The CFW701 has DC link inductors, uh, whereas the CFW501 has special capacitors. In, case here, in this case here, we are using plastic film capacitors, which um, create, let's say, lower harmonic content. Uh, both drives have built-in RF5 filters as standard. Also, they have the flash memory as accessory, 
with this one you have the cop function so it's a cop and paste function from one drive to the next one so imagine you are making several machines uh, that that utilizes the same drive so here is you can just copy and paste the parameters the software and then on uh, the PLC functionality is also built in for both of them, making it a powerful uh, combination, a drive, a variable speed drive, and also uh, a PLC. So instead of using external PLCs for the machine uh, automation, you can use it. And they are free of charge. You can download it uh, straight from our website, www.weg.net. Usually these drives are located in harsh environments. So uh, as a standard the drive utilizes the conformal coating 3 C2 type, but if you believe that your application requires something else, something more where the atmosphere is even more aggressive and corrosive than standard ones, we have as optional the C3C, uh, 3 C3 uh, conformal coating. As I said before, in these, these, the main uh, communication protocols for the HVAC market is available as a standard for both products. And finally, uh, the products are certified according European standards, CE, UL, and many others from different countries, meaning that the same product can give you flexibility uh, wherever you use your machine. So if you send it to North America, Europe, and then on. So let's check some success cases of WEG when using HVAC drives. So here the first one is a shopping center in Brazil. Uh, it was applied premium efficiency motors and also HVAC drives in cooling towers, smoke extraction systems, fans and pump pumps, and they managed to get 50% of energy saving just by using these components. Another application, another success case, it's office buildings in Sao Paulo. So in these two towers here, they used the HVAC drives and they reduced the overall building electricity consumption in 15%. And so how is that possible? Just changing the drives. Uh, let's not forget that uh, HVAC is responsible for nearly half of the electricity consumption in a building. So just by changing how a pump, fan and compressor works, you can achieve these and because of it, these buildings, they received a certification of sustainable buildings. Uh, another one here is the Temple of Football in the world. So Maracanã Football Stadium was awarded because they also uh, used HVAC uh, components. And here it was used 25 HVAC CFW701 and Primo Motors from WEG as well. The last one here is WEG itself uh, in a cooling tower. Our department here of quality system and environment uh, made a study to check the, the, the benefits of using, let's say, standard traditional components and premium efficiency components. So the premium motor W22 and the HVAC drive 701. And they observed energy savings of 48%. So what's the takeaway from this webinar? As you have already listened from me several times here, HVAC is everywhere in our lives. So in banks, in shopping malls, in hospitals, hotels, our homes, in our cars. Once again, everywhere. So and more and more people are looking to have the systems in more places as temperatures either go up or too low. And HVAC speed drives, they, they are perfect uh, solution to be used in HVAC systems. So here we can see the drive being used once again in cooling towers, chillers, in the pumps, and also in blowers and fans when distributing the cooled air or the heat air through the building. And we have seen that it brings benefits, energy savings, protections, and functions that specifically developed for this application. And finally, contact WEG if you have any sort of question. So thank you very much for, for, having, uh, for having you here in this webinar. 
uh, today. Now we are going to open a Q&A session. Um, you can use the chat in this streaming platform to write down your questions. Uh, thank you very much for being here. I hope you have learned something new for your professional life. And you can definitely find us on our website, on YouTube, LinkedIn. So there are several platforms where you can find us. You can always contact uh, your local web support uh, to clarify any question that you have. And so stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you very much and see you in the next webinar.